Hi there, my name is Marcus Hilberg, and in this video I'm going to show you how you can build web apps in Java using the Vaadin framework. So if you aren't uh, familiar with Vaadin, it's an Apache 2 licensed open source framework that has around 150,000 active developers worldwide. Uh, around 40% of Fortune 100 companies are using Vaadin internally and behind Spring MVC we are the number two Java based web framework out there. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you a few things. First, uh, we're going to take a look at what it really takes to build a complex modern web application and what we mean by modern web application. After that, we're going to have a very quick uh, run through of the basics of Vaadin, just so you can kind of follow along. And then we're going to spend the bulk of the video doing hands-on development to build an actual full step web application using the Vaadin framework. So let's jump in. First, what do I mean by modern web applications? When I'm talking about modern web applications, I'm talking about apps that should, first of all, be fast. Uh, they should be good looking. They should be able to handle big amounts of data and they should be able to support basically any kind of device or browser uh, and not require the user to have any kind of plugins installed on their, on their device. So, uh, Using the traditional way of building web applications, there are several things that we need in order to do this. First of all, uh, obviously we need something on the server that can uh, pass this data to the client and back, so we'll need some sort of REST controller. On the client then, we'll need some sort of template that kind of lays out everything uh, uh, in the browser. We'll need some CSS to make it look nice, and then depending on how complex the application is, we'll need uh, little to a lot of JavaScript to kind of tie all these pieces together. And all of this can get really complex uh, very quickly. So that's why we at Vaadin have taken it to ourselves to fight for simplicity when it comes to web development. The way we do that is by simplifying the model uh, used for building web applications. In Vaadin, everything is a component. So if we want a text field and a button, we instantiate a new text field and a new button. Every uh, component gets laid out by layout. So in the previous example, these two components were inside of a horizontal layout. If we change that to a vertical layout, their order would change. They would be stacked on top of each other instead of next to each other. If we want to add any kind of user interaction to our application, which you probably want to do, that's very easy to do, to do in Vaadin. Uh, the way we do that is by listening for user interaction. So any kind of component in the Vaadin framework that a user can interact with will trigger different types of events whenever those interactions happen. In this case, we're going to add a click listener to the button component. And whenever a user clicks the button, we're going to add a new label to the layout with the value in the text field. So if we run this, you can see that I can type in hello. If I click, the hello value gets shown. And if I change the value and keep clicking, the value gets updated. A lot of times, though, when we're working with bigger applications, uh, we're not interested in dealing with the data uh, from fields just individually. Rather, we want to tie that data, bind that data to a object. So in this case, uh, we have a person object, just a plain Java object. This could be an entity, for instance. Uh, so in order for us to tie this to our form that we have here, uh, we'll use a binder class of type person. Uh, we'll then tell the binder to bind the instance fields uh, with this particular layout. What that's going to do is it's going to look at the names of our text fields, and it's going to look at the fields in the person object and match those uh, by name. We can definitely configure this, but this is a very simple way that you can do data binding uh, with kind of a convention over configuration. Finally, uh, our button here can listen for the click event and try to write the bean if there are no validation errors and then finally show, show the value in a notification. So let's try this. Type in a first name and a last name, and press save. And we can see that we have the notification there showing person dot to string. So that's actually coming from the person object itself. 
A lot of times also in applications we need to deal with lists of a lot of data. Uh, in Vaadin this is something that we can do very easily. So in this case we're going to build a data grid. The grid gets instantiated by just uh, creating a new instance of the grid object. Uh, we're then going to define some columns on it by passing in a function reference to first name, last name, and email, and setting captions to those columns to whatever we want it to be. Finally, we call our service, which we have auto-wired in here, and get people. That will just return a list of Java objects, and based on that, Vaadin will be able to generate the columns that we just defined, and the user can scroll through and sort all of this data. A lot of times, though, we have much more data than we can kind of reasonably pull out of the database at once. Most likely, the user is not even going to look at all of that data. And even if they do, they're not going to need all 100,000 rows at the same time. So if we want to do that, uh, we can kind of keep the column definitions the same. But instead of uh, querying the database uh, and setting the items to a collection, what we can do is set a data provider. This takes in two uh, lambdas. One that gets in parameters for sort order, offset, and limit. And those we can pass on to our service to kind of page the data fetching. The other lambda here just returns the total count of objects in our, in our database. So with that data provider in place, we can now give the end user the same exact experience, but from uh, in, in terms of our application running, we're no longer fetching the entire database. We're only fetching data in small pages as they are needed. Uh, any page fetches will get triggered automatically as the user is scrolling along. Now another thing that tends to take up a lot of time when we're building web applications is making things look nice. Uh, to help developers uh, tackle that in Vaadin, we're shipping with a theme engine called Valo. And Valo allows you to define some parameters that it uses to then build a theme that's cohesive and coherent through uh, kind of the entire library of components that we have. So in this uh, first example, we have a background color that has a lightness value of 100%. If we change nothing but the lightness value to 33%, you can see that the theme engine not only changed the background color to a dark gray, but it also understood that we can't have a black text on a dark gray background. That wouldn't be legible. So it's actually going to calculate uh, sane values for all the parameters that you don't set. So it's going to set the text uh, value to a kind of light gray to give it enough contrast to be red. By defining some further parameters, things like border radius and bevels and shadows, uh, we can really customize the UI to look anywhere from uh, the previous kind of web app interface to this uh, Windows-like interface and anything in between. So the theme engine will really allow you to customize your UI look and feel probably 95% of the way there. The kind of remaining 5% uh, of configuration or customization that you want to do in terms of your company's look and feel, you can then uh, build on top of this theme with just plain CSS or SAS. So in summary, everything in Vaadin is a component. You lay out these components by putting them inside of layouts. Uh, you can add interaction to Vaadin components by listening to the events that they emit. And finally, you do all of this in Java. And that's it. Thank you for watching this. And if you have any questions, post them in the comments below or tweet me at Marcus Helberg. Thanks.